Jesus, I'm still foggy. I feel it. I feel the numbness. I feel just kind of the blanket over me. It feels like a dull blanket over my over my spirit. And so before we dive in today, I just want to pray. I, I present to you, we present to you our body, soul, and spirit. We present to you our hearts, our minds, our wills, all that is within us. We, we return to you. We consecrate ourselves to you, come back to you. And we pray that your blood would cleanse away the fog of war. Pray that your blood would cleanse that blanketing, that concussive numbness. Pray the blood of Christ would cleanse our spirit. Let it cleanse our spirit. Pray the blood of Christ would cleanse our soul and our body. Let it cleanse our minds. Let it cleanse our hearts, our wills, all that is within us. Holy Spirit, come and restore our union with Jesus. Come and restore us, Holy Spirit. Quicken us. Burn away the fog, God. We pray that you would burn away the fog and dial us back into you. Bring us back, uh, Psalm 18 says, he reached down from on high and he rescued me and he put me in a spacious place, open country, clearness, vastness. We pray that you would restore us to open country, God, that you just bring us back out into a spacious place. We pray this for our Dear listeners, we pray it for today's podcast in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, welcome back to the Ransomed Heart Podcast. John Eldridge with Alex Burton, Alan Arnold, continuing a conversation on the fog of war. And it really didn't mean to leave you just hanging with nothing last time. I hope the daily prayer was helpful to you. Um, but want to pick up the conversation this time with when you find yourself in that numb place, when you find yourself fogged, dull, God doesn't seem real, all those beautiful words he's spoken to you over the years, you can't even remember them, the kingdom doesn't seem true, unbelief seems true, <laughs> discouragement seems true, numbness seems true. Like what works? What historically have you done? to get out from the fog of war? I think one big category, it can actually be really helpful to do it before you go into the daily prayer, but the idea of getting present hmm. um, and, and to be aware of yourself and how yes. like when you feel numb, you know it, you know it. Yeah. And actually really quite simply beginning to become aware of yourself and your surroundings and you're breathing. Gosh, that's huge. Literally telling yourself, okay, I hear birds chirping in the background. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I hear the AC in the room. Like, oh, there goes the bus again. Yeah, I feel my hand under my leg. Like, yeah. I, whatever begins to make you more aware of being present and in the moment, because when you're under that, you are numb and you are so mm -hmm. not present. And, and mm -hmm. even trying to go to the daily prayer in that mode can almost be a little futile because you're, you're actually not praying. <laughs> you're just <it>. chan chanting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. actually has, has been helpful for me mm -hmm. just this morning as, mm -hmm. as I was laying in bed before I prayed. Um, there was a little bit of an act of, okay, come present to the moment. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to pray. Mm. And now I'm going to oh my goodness. believe what I'm praying yes. and be aware of what I'm praying. So that's really helpful. That was this morning, Alex. That's huge that you named that. Yesterday, Stacy was grocery shopping and she bought some beautiful irises. And they're just this rich, rich violet, purple, light blue, yellow colors in these irises. They are glorious. They were on the counter since yesterday afternoon in a vase. I did not see them until this morning. Wow. Like, like walk by them. Yeah. But this morning it was, oh my goodness, those are beautiful. 
pause, get present, and go, okay, John, like you didn't even see the flowers on the counter. Like, mm -hmm. get where you been, you know, kind of come back mm -hmm. into the room here, buddy. And mm -hmm. and I just stood and and kind of took the beauty in and let the beauty sort of wake me up a little as well, just in terms of being present. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For me, another category is relentlessly holding on to what God has already promised or spoken. Like a dog holds on to a bone when you're trying to rip it out of its mouth. Like, I mean, lately, uh, there's been a few areas in Kelly and Mai's life where there's been this, I would call it an illusion of scarcity. Just in, and sometimes it's time, sometimes it's money, sometimes it's a hope for one of our children. And it just feels like, ah, like it's it's just not enough or it's not happening. But God has spoken very clearly to both of us abundance in those areas mm. over the last year. Mm. And so what really has helped me is like on my drive to work, as I'm coming into the outpost, I start to have those feelings of scarcity. And it's like, no, God, you have promised abundance. Mm. You have promised in these specific areas, and I name them abundance. And now I step into that abundance, no matter what it looks like on a human level, mm. from a kingdom perspective, you have already promised abundance. And so the quickest way for the fog to clear for me mm is to keep speaking what God's already revealed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rather than let the fog come in and go, I guess there's not abundance. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I guess what I see is the truest thing, and boy, that must mean scarcity, yeah. and I forget what God says. So it's like stones of remembrance. Do you have those written down somewhere? I do. M multiple places. Okay. So and you're not just relying on your memory. No. You're going somewhere to get that? I'm going to to journals to get that. And sometimes I write it down on a post-it note or note card, yep. and it's on my truck or mm -hmm. it's on my mm -hmm. mirror in the bedroom or on my nightstand. So writing it is key, but beyond writing it, I've found for me speaking it out mm. loud in trust mm. and in love, but in power. Mm. It's just saying, this is the truest thing. Mm. I will not forget. I will not doubt based on what I see. If I know God said something, I'm holding on to it. Yeah. And if that takes me to the edge of a cliff, yeah, I'll walk on the edge of the cliff before I go. I guess I just heard God wrong. Like yeah. I, I guess I, this is a time of scarcity. Another simple, simple thing that works for me: when I get up in the morning, I try and walk outside, mm. um, no matter how cold it is, no matter how wet, and whatever the weather. I try and walk outside, and I even actually begin my prayers outside. And the reason for that is our senses are a rich part of our spiritual life. Like we are body, soul, and spirit. Your body matters. And if your body can begin to come out of numbness and kind of be quickened by, mm. oh, there's a, there's a sense of orange blossoms this morning, or, oh, that's a very cold breeze, or I hear the sound of water, you know, it's, it's the rain still dripping off the gutters, like that helps. Nature helps. Simple. I'm just talking about just stepping outside, not going sailing. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to make this unattainable. <laughs> yes. The other thing that I have found absolutely fascinating for me recently, I need to touch real things. Most of my world is screens, and I hate that. You know, I'm a writer, and then like everybody else, I've got email and, and that sort of thing. I, so I spend a lot of time in front of a computer screen. And then everybody's glued to their phones, right? And texts that are coming in and updates and that sort of thing, checking the weather, whatever, you know, checking the basketball scores. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm just realizing most of my world is artificial. I live in a building with, you know, with AC, right? So the temperature is controlled, the sound is muted, everything is artificial. And so I will go out and I will just touch real things. I will touch the earth. Mm. I will feel stones. I will pick up stones and hold them in my hands. And there's something really critical to the human condition that like, we need the interaction with the real. Yep. And if you're in the fog of war, I'll bet a good bit of that has come because you've spent too much time in technology mm -hmm. and you've just been in front of screen to screen to screen to artificial this to plastic that. Yeah, that's huge, John. And, and especially in our day and age, the, the amount of time that people spend on social media, your soul can only take so much. Yeah. And I know because I, I was there, um, especially with Facebook, mm -hmm. like I would spend hours 
every free moment was, oh, what what have people posted? And it's the gamut of things. Yeah. And one thing is yeah. a exciting, funny thing, and one thing is a, that's horrible. Like, mm -hmm. and it has that numbing effect mm -hmm. of your soul and mm -hmm. gives a place mm -hmm. to that fog of war. So I pretty much turned off Facebook except for a few things that I have to do because my role here at Ransom Heart and being engaged with it for that reason. But other than that, like I don't look at it anymore. And man, how much that opened up capacity to to be more present mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and not under all that. Yeah. So And yeah. Alex, you know, last week you mentioned part of the fog of war was it isolated you. And I think a big part of coming out of it is finding those deep friends, having those deep friends to help remind you of your story. Mm. Right. This is who you are. Mm. Remember, this is the story we're in. Mm. It's like they have eyes to see sometimes where our vision gets clouded. Mm -hmm. And so if you have those people, man, lean into them in those times. Even if you can't mm. define or describe exactly what's going on, I think of that scene, John, um, from Lord of the Rings with the king, where he's— Oh, Theoden. When yeah. he's under the total fog mm -hmm. warfare, and he's spell just thing. mumbling, yeah. and he's he looks like he's a hundred years older. Yes, I mean that's how I think we feel internally sometimes, mm -hmm. and to be able to have those friends break in, you know, our Gandalf, mm -hmm. and basically go no, and bring mm -hmm. the truth, bring light, and and so that's key is mm -hmm. our story being remembered, not just by us, but with deep friends. Yeah, that's right. that's good. Something very simple. We've been talking about the power of prayer, the power of the daily prayer. Um, but Alex, you mentioned, you know, I can do the daily prayer numb. Mm -hmm. um, and here's here's one thing I will do. When I'm praying, as soon as I realize that my mind has wandered, I will go back to where I last remember <laughs> yeah. that I was present to it. Yeah. And it may be a paragraph. I mean, it may be several sentences. It may, you know, maybe five minutes ago. I will go back and pick up where I left off because what I just did was meaningless because it was just la 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 la. You yeah. know, these are just words that I'm. My heart isn't in. Right. You know, my my soul is not committed to. I'm not. You know, communing with God here. Right. So just that one act of when you find that you have spaced out in prayer or in your scripture reading or whatever, go back, go back to where you were last present and pick it up from there has been very helpful for me. John, what if, if somebody's in the fog of war, how would you counsel them if they start to realize that, but there's major decisions that are needing to be made mm. that day, that week, mm. and they realize now I'm naming where I'm at, but there still is that fog. Yeah. What would the counsel be? As I finally mature <laughs> as I finally am growing up. I I am surprised how um, few decisions have to be made today. I used to feel like, no, 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 you don't understand. We could, No, it's now. Right. I got to make that decision now. And there is usually a way to forestall that decision if you can. You, you literally ask for more time. Or just take the pressure off yourself or or talk to your spouse if you're married and say, hey, can, can this wait 24 hours? Because I will make this decision out of a bad place. So I first just want to say, you'd be surprised how many decisions actually don't need to be made right now um, when you're when you're under it, because you probably won't make good decisions if a decision has to be made and you can't hear Christ and you're in the fog I ask Jesus to rescue me mm. and go, Jesus, I need to make a decision right now. If this is wrong, would you completely block this? <laughs> Close this door, whatever. I'm, you know, whatever I'm about to do here, Lord, if this is a bad call, I give you permission to completely overrule it. Because sometimes you do. You gotta make you gotta make that call. And are we going tonight or aren't we? Are we are you gonna pick up that phone or aren't you? You know, sometimes you mm -hmm. um, Jesus rescue me in this. But I, I'm just amazed how few decisions actually do need to be made. Cause you know, back in the conversations on listening prayer, hearing Christ is very difficult for me under immense pressure. Mm -hmm. right? right? Right. When there's a lot of urgency, when there's a lot of drama, I I have just found that, you know what? Um, just walk away, 
let the drama subside, go get in the sunshine, so to speak, get your clarity back before you make the decision, right? And for those listeners who have kids living at home right now, especially, I I just want to encourage you, your kids will be under the fog of war as well. And as a father or mother, you have unique power to speak into them and clear that fog Mm -hmm. for them. Sometimes if a child is eight or nine, they may not know how Mm -hmm. to do that. They're under your authority. So speaking into them their identity in Christ, Mm -hmm. standing for them, battling on their behalf spiritually, like that's huge. So yes, think of it in terms of your own spiritual clouding and boy, the fog of war, but you may see that in your son or daughter. And if so, Mm -hmm. go after that. Don't just... Give them an, you know, some kind of entertainment or just a pat on the back. Like, fight for their clarity as well. Mm, that's good. What are the other things, um, as, you, as you're beginning to think more about this, that, that burns away the fog of war, that brings you back, back to clarity, back to yourself, back to God? John, one of the um, pieces that, that I've been praying more and more lately and is really helpful in this category is is oneness with Jesus, mm. unity mm. with Jesus. Mm. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Mm-hmm. And when you're in that place of fog of war, you do feel isolated. You feel isolated from God. Mm-hmm. You feel isolated from others. You feel isolated from Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so that's been an intentional prayer of of Jesus, I ask for oneness with you. Restore my union. Yeah, restore my union with you. Fill me with your life, Jesus. Especially in as I pray through the daily prayer, and as I you know get into the resurrection and into the ascension, and that's usually the area where I'll, I'll take more time to go. Jesus, I need oneness with mm. you. I need your life. Mm. I need your life to fill me in every way. Yes. Um, heart, mind, body, soul, will, and spirit. Yeah. And um, man, that's so helpful for for clearing it out. And I can feel the life of Jesus within me, mm-hmm. and, you know, mm-hmm. beginning to give me that clarity to give me his life. That's good. Yeah. That's huge. A, a scripture that I keep handy that really kind of reorients me is Psalm 27, 14. And in the message, the translation is, stay with God, take heart, don't quit. I'll say it again stay with God. So just those phrases, okay, stay with God in the midst of the fog and the confusion, Mm. stay with Mm. God, and then take heart. You know, above all else, we're supposed to nurture our heart. Mm. Well, usually when I'm in a fog, I'm not nurturing my heart. Like my Mm. heart has gone unattended for a while, and that's part of the problem. That's part of the way the enemy gets in. So I remember that, and then don't quit. As we said earlier, there's no shame when you find yourself in the middle of fog and you start to feel isolated or like you're the only one. But man, don't quit. Like push through. Stay with God. Guard your heart and and persevere. Make it through. Mm, that's good. I'm thinking in a little bit of a different category right now. You know, often when we have these conversations, I'll think about what have I read on that? What resonates with me? Kind of from the memory files there and. Two quotes, one from Oswald Chambers, and he says that God allows these seasons. The imagery of his words were so good, I I hope I can recall them. He says, sometimes it is only the naked will Mm. clinging to God. Yeah. The naked will. There's no emotions to support it. There's no Mm -hmm. great feelings. Mm -hmm. There's no vision of God, there's, but there's just the naked will saying, no, I'm not going to let go. I am clinging to you, God. I am clinging to what's true. I'm clinging to those words he's spoken. And I just want to say that actually has a very profound effect on an individual. I, I know it feels awful. I've been there. I get it. Those are horrible things to go through, but it actually does really amazing things to your soul. Because your will and your your volition, your determination, your resolve, all, all of those words gets strengthened in those times that you just choose, no, I just choose God, I reject the fog, and then you begin to make those, it feels like just pushing, pushing against a strong current, a riptide, 
I am choosing to pray. I'm choosing to get outside. I'm choosing to turn off the television. I'm choosing to unplug from media. I'm, I'm not going to eat that bag of donuts. I, you know, just pure volition, pure volition can't sustain the Christian life. But there are times that God is doing that. It actually strengthens your soul. It's, it's like any other physical exercise. If you want to grow, if you want to get stronger, you, you have to be pushed. Kind of like the spin class that you were, right. you were okay. talking about last time. <laughs> you know, you do. And, and then I'm thinking of this passage again from George MacDonald where he says, but that person has become perfect in faith when from low heart and dull mind and forsakenness can still cry out, my father, my God. McDonald was actually holding that individual up as the greatest of all, because they're still crying out, my father, my God, without anything in their thoughts or their heart or emotions or experience to support it in that moment. Yeah. Um, and I, I just want to name that, because we do think there's a way out of the fog. We know there is. We, we get into it, and we get out of it, and, and we could tell a thousand stories of it. But there is something beautiful about the choosing in the midst of it, right? The shaping of the soul, what that does for us. We really hope this conversation's been helpful. Two-part podcast here on the Fog of War with Alan Arnold and Alex Burton, John Eldridge here. For more, uh, we invite you to come to our website at ransomedheart.com. There is so much great stuff there to help you avoid the fog and and help you out of it, including Ransomed Heart TV. If you're not aware of that resource, you can find that on our website and also on our app. And there are all sorts of free video of phenomenal sessions and, and conferences and lectures that we've given on different topics. Just great stuff. So ransomedheart.com and the Ransomed Heart app.